Hi everyone, um, we're just going to give it a couple of minutes just to wait for a few more people to join and then we'll get started. So we'll get started now. Um, so I just wanted to say hello to everyone and welcome to the e-hiring event for Black Country Healthcare. My name's Paige and I work as a programme facilitator across Black Country and West Birmingham region supporting workforce transformation. Thank you for joining today and I hope you enjoy the event and it inspires you to apply for a role within the NHS. Today, Black Country Healthcare will be running through what it's like to work for them as a trust as well as details of the healthcare support worker role and the recruitment process. You'll be hearing from um, our colleagues from Black Country Healthcare, which you can see listed on the screen. There is the opportunity, should you have any questions, to pop them in the chat box to your right, and we will endeavour to answer throughout, as well as allowing dedicated time at the end to go through questions. You'll be hearing from a number of colleagues, plus see an interactive video from uh, various healthcare support workers across the Trust and that will hopefully give you an idea of what day-to-day -day working life would look like. I hope following this event you will feel motivated to apply for a healthcare support worker role and wish you the best of luck in your application and finally please remember you do not have to have worked in a healthcare setting before in order to apply for this role and this could be the start of your journey. I'll now hand over to Ashley Williams, who's the Director of People for Black Country Healthcare, to give you further details on the Trust. Thanks Paige and hi everyone. So as Paige said, I'm Ashi. I'm really, really excited that you've all joined us today and thank you for taking the time out. Hopefully what you hear today will prompt you in making that application to the Trust. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of background around who we are as an organisation. So Black Country Healthcare, we're a specialist mental health trust. We also deliver learning disability services and work within our community services across the whole of the Black Country. So that's Studley, Walsall, Wolverhampton and Sandwell. We offer services to adults as well as older adults. As I said, our learning disability services, but we also work with children and young people and you'll often hear that referred to as CAMS. So as an NHS Trust, we were formed on the 1st of April 2020, so we're brand new, we're just coming up to our year anniversary. Um, and previous to that, we were two separate trusts working in the Black Country. So you might have heard of Black Country Partnership and Dudley and Walsall Mental Health Trust. So for us, what we do is combine our resources, our strategies and our absolutely talented, fabulous workforce to deliver really outstanding services. And if you come and join us, you'll be part of that team. We've currently got over 3000 members of staff working for us, but we also have a huge number of temporary workers that also work with us and part of our family. And again, we'll give you a bit more detail about our temporary staffing services a bit later. The Black Country, as you probably are aware, is a really diverse area with lots of people made up of different backgrounds um, and from different cultural backgrounds. And we want to make sure we replicate that in our trust. So we also welcome applications from anyone, particularly those obviously from a culturally diverse background. If we just move on to the next slide, I'll give you a bit more information about the trust. So whatever your background, education or experience, we welcome your application to the Trust. And whilst you're here today interested in the healthcare support worker roles, if you do look at our internet page, you'll also see lots of other opportunities and that might be in nursing, psychiatry, pharmacy, we have a range of admin roles. So if you're interested in, a field, um, in working in IT, for example, facilities, finance, we've got lots of other vacancies. So please do take a look or encourage your friends and family to have a look. Um, for us, we really want to develop our workforce and we really like to engage with our workforce. 
and we work with our workforce to develop our strategies, to develop patient care, to make sure we are delivering high quality services. So you can expect that we will be working with you and taking your ideas into account when it comes to improving our services. And as Paige said, we don't expect people to have had a previous career in the NHS. What we will do, though, is if you join us, is look at how we can develop your career. So depending on what you're interested in and where you want to go, we'll work with you on that. And there are a range of different opportunities from apprenticeships and clinical placements, but also we encourage applications from people who want to do work experience with us or volunteering. So you might not be quite sure whether you do want a permanent role in the NHS, but there is something for you here. So if you are interested, you can look at our internet page. We're also on NHS Jobs, where you can see all of the vacancies we have. But also make sure you follow us on our social media platforms, so Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. We also advertise our jobs there, so please do have a look. And then this slide just gives you again a bit more information about us as a trust. So as I said, we employ over 3,000 staff. We service the whole of the black country, so a population of just over one million. And we have lots of different um, hospital and community settings. So there are seven hospitals that we work in across the black country and then a range of community sites. So depending on what's convenient to you, where you live, we can offer you opportunities in Dudley, Sandwell, Walsall and Wolverhampton. As I said before, we've got a range of specialities in terms of mental health, as well as learning disabilities and children and um, young people services. What's really important is that we encourage people to apply for roles with us who have the same values as us. So our values as a trust are that we like to care for people, we care for each other, we care for our service users and our patients. We also enable our patients and service users to get the best out of their health and help them manage any conditions they have. And we always do this working together. We're definitely people that work together as a team. And then all of our staff um, demonstrate integrity. So they deliver high quality services in a really open, honest, transparent way. And so we're looking for people with those values and that have kindness and compassion. So if you believe that's you, please again do encourage um, an application. So I'm going to hand over to our Associate Director of Nursing, Becky, and she's going to talk to you a little bit more about some of our hospital sites. Thanks, Ashley, and hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Becky. Lovely to meet you all today. So where are we? Where are we based? And I've seen quite a number of questions in the chat box already asking about particular localities. So just to let you know, the majority of our services operate from around 65 sites that are spread across our four black country boroughs. We've also got some specialist services that operate in other parts of the country. Um, so we've got services in Worcester and in Oxfordshire. Lots of our work takes place from those community sites where we both outreach to service users in their own homes or in other residences or also uh, we can sometimes see people at some community venues. But in terms of our hospital sites, we've got seven hospitals over those four boroughs, which host 21. So we've got 321 mental health and dementia care beds, um, which also includes a psychiatric intensive care unit. And then we've got 39 beds which are there for people with mental health, well, with needs that are associated to their learning disability. And this also includes a low secure hospital. I'm going to hand over to Lauren now, who's going to tell you a little bit more about what you should expect when you join us and what you can expect from us throughout the whole of your career journey. Hi all, I'm Laura um, and as Becky said, I'm going to just be giving an overview of some of the um, training that you can expect um, when you join us initially and then um, as we develop your career. So when you start with this, you'll be provided with a full induction programme to support you in your role and ensure that you have the skills and training needed to work effectively as a healthcare support worker. Some of this will include e-learning modules, which cover everything from dementia awareness to information governance. A corporate induction where you'll learn the ins and outs of who we are as a trust, 
including how we strive to look after your health and well-being as an employer. A local induction will follow to get you to know your area and team. And then you'll have specific learning such as basic life support, infection prevention control and mental health act training. Throughout this process, you'll be fully supported by the learning and development team and your manager. In addition to the previous slide, the care certificate is an agreed set of standards that define the knowledge, skills and behaviours of roles in health and social care. And it's nationally recognised qualification for those who are new to care. You'll be supported by your manager to complete the 15 standards, which you can see on the screen at the moment, in the workplace over a period of 12 weeks. You'll then be awarded your care certificate, which will follow you throughout your NHS journey. At Black Country Healthcare, it's so important that we support and develop our staff in their own career journeys. You'll see from the example roadmap that the Trust can offer a range of exciting opportunities and qualifications to support you to develop. From getting in when you start with Black Country Healthcare, we'll support you to gain your care certificate and functional skills if needed, along with possible apprenticeships in healthcare support work at different levels. To getting on and going far with development opportunities in nursing, the allied health professions, management and other healthcare professions. We really hope that today will be your first step in an exciting NHS career journey. We now have a video to share with you where you can hear a little bit more about the role and to hear from some of our existing healthcare support workers. So hello, my name is Becky Temple Purcell and I'm the Deputy Chief Nurse at Black Country Healthcare NHS Foundation Trust. It's really great that you're interested in finding out about healthcare support worker roles as they play such a vital part in our care service delivery. We've got lots of amazing healthcare support workers who across all of our service settings provide care support to service users and their families either in our hospitals, community clinics, through supporting people in their own homes, and also now by contact that take place using digital technology. Our healthcare support workers have a really important role within the team, as very often they are the point of contact with service users where direct care happens, and therefore can make such a difference to the experience that service users receive of services. It's not just what they do in their work as service users, for example, the practical support that they give, being alongside people at critical times of risk, providing hands on care, but also really importantly, the how they do this that has such a positive impact. Our healthcare support workers are part of the nursing family and are such lived by something that we call the six C's, which are the core values of nursing. So these are care, compassion, competence, communication, courage and commitment. And it's these values that shape the way we work on a daily basis, enable us to deliver high quality care. Hi there, I'm Eve. I'm Francis. And I'm Kelly. Yeah, my name is Stephen Watts, I'm a healthcare support worker with uh, Black Country Ministers Foundation Trust. And I'm a healthcare support worker based at Ham Street. I um, work at CRS North Walsall, which is the community recovery service for patients with mental health. And uh, Kelly's my, my colleague. Yeah, we work on the same team. So I originally got myself into the role through somebody I know telling me that the bank and rostering team were recruiting for healthcare support workers. I applied online, had an interview with the team and landed myself the job. Uh, I came into healthcare because I want to make a difference to people's lives. Um, it's something I'm very passionate about, it's something I've always wanted to do. Uh, I was doing some bank work at the Warsaw Manor Hospital following uh, being at uni previous to that and I saw the post 
in uh, the NHS website. So I applied, got an interview, and then was successfully again in the position at Mosley Day Unit. I was made redundant after uh, 11 years of working in uh, mental health in the community. But the same as you, I've seen an advert uh, on the NHS website, uh, applied for the job. Luckily, to got an interview and then a permanent position. So I've always been really interested in getting into the mental health field after studying healthcare at college. And whilst doing that, I was actually on my placement at Hallam Street. So I was really passionate about getting a job in the trust after that. And just recently, I applied for a full time position at Hallam Street and I'm due to start that very soon. So the area that I work in is acute mental health. So we will have patients that come to us on the wards who are in crisis and need intervention and assistance whilst with us at their stay in hospital. I think you need to be a good listener, 100% a good listener. You need to be non-judgmental and I think you need to go into each patient's because uh, obviously everyone's individual what we offer is very you know person centered isn't it to each patient that we've got yeah. uh, no two days are the same everything's totally different from one visit to the next visit so you obviously have to treat everyone individual don't you when you go in and, and just assess the situation identify things that they might want to achieve, things that we need to get sorted in order for them to have, um, well, an OK recovery really. We're trying to, we're trying to nip the, their obstacles at me along the way and try to keep the stress levels down. If I say no one who wants to come into mental health, you just have to, you have to be, you know, you just have to certain quality, like you have to be patient, you have to be empathic, you have to respect other people. Uh, religious views, cultural views, you know, people of different background. It's, it's, it's something that is it's really, really very, very interesting. Uh, so the stigma attached to it is not as bad as since when you get mental health. Because everyone, anyone who suffers mental health, regardless of your position in life. So it is something that, you know, uh, that, you know, that I'm very, very passionate about. So I believe that the qualities you need to be a healthcare support worker are being very compassionate and empathetic as the patients need staff who are there for them at possibly the hardest and worst time in life. So it's really important to be able to provide the best possible care we can for these patients. You, you can't really take anything personal with the job either because, you know, depending on what mood they're in and what's happening in their life, you they have to have broad shoulders, didn't you, Fran? Do have to have broad shoulders and a sense of humour as well. Yeah, that helps. You know, really staying calm and instant problem solving as well. Yeah. If an issue comes up and they get worked up about about this, you have to have a bit of information behind you and quick think to to solve things yeah. that have come understanding is a really big quality to have as a healthcare support worker as you'll come across um, all different kinds of people with all different kinds of stories and different backgrounds so it's important to understand that mental health can affect anybody what i love most about my my role and working for the trust is that it's a huge trust and even though there's so many different departments and different areas that people work in, we all come together for the same goal, which is to provide the best possible support for the patients. Um, working with NHS Foundation, NHS um, Backcountry uh, Foundation Trust, has been an eye opener for me, especially this uh, pandemic time, where, where as we all know, a lot of people are lonely at home. Uh, there's restrictions and so people can live out so it can exacerbate people's mental health so we got a lot of patients coming in here but everyone is being taken care of because we've got the equipment we've got the resources um, to deal with it our PPE is up to standard uh, my colleagues who uh, we are working in the COVID world to start with 
So um, they are doing an amazing job, including me. <laughs> the team is very good. Everybody helps each other, don't they, with yeah. information and knowledge. Yeah, we do tend to bounce off the CPNs and our management. Our management are really good and supportive as well, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, one day you could be out all day doing visits, uh, but then you have to be in the office and do your notes, report writing on the computer and things like that. So it, it's good to liaise with your peers. And your team members, yeah. Yeah. Management with uh, the trust that we're at, I found it's really good as well. Yeah, we've got a good management team, I think, mate. We have, they're always available. I get regular supervisions. My training's all up to date. You know, it's it's all online there for us, isn't it? Working uh, in the hospital, I used to work um, in the community, work in the hospital, there are typical differences. So we can come in the hospital, you have more resources, uh, you know, to do your job. Um, assessment is kind of more quicker. Um, um, we have an amazing team. And so it's been, it's been, it's been a very big uh, experience for me really. And it's something that, like I said, something I'm passionate about. And I intend to, you know, I want to follow my career. At the moment, I'm a healthcare support worker. I hope to be a mental health nurse someday and probably go on and on, and, you know. What I personally love most about my role is knowing that I will have aided people in their rehabilitation. So sometimes on the wards, we have pe people that come to us that are really poorly. And um, the difference in when they first come to us compared to when they leave is just amazing. Um, it's the most rewarding part of the job, knowing that us as a trust and a team have aided people's rehabilitation and helped them get back into the community. So, yeah. Every day is different. I love doing the physical health clinic, the healthy lifestyle, which is a little bit different from doing visits to patients. Yeah, me and you do the <coughs> healthy lifestyle clinics, don't we? We do. I also do the link working for the IPC. So I have to do my monthly reports. I enjoy doing that as well. Mental health is a serious, it's a serious thing, you know, because there are a lot of people suffering mental health without realizing it. Uh, so having a hospital like this is uh, it's amazing, you know, it helps a lot of people. I see people come in there that have no home. So um, it's interesting. I think if mental health is something that they enjoy and that, that they enjoy working, I think you, you do need to have broad shoulders. I think when you come into work in mental health, um, I think it really does help if you've just got an open mind. Um, but I think with our job, I mean, it, it's a mat we love it, don't we, Fran? We, we, yeah. we do generally really enjoy our job. Seeing the patients achieve yeah. a, a goal that they yeah. have to do is amazing. And that's just yeah. by us assisting them, isn't it? And putting them yeah. on the right track. Yeah, definitely. It's really nice when um, you can step down as a support worker because you've achieved the goals with the patients and they're, they're on a level playing field. They've reached their optimism, mental health level, and they can cope independently of course, still taking medication and having reviews with their medics and, and can phone crisis if they relapse or feel as though they're feeling unwell again. But I, I would recommend the job to people. The, yeah. the team are very good. The, the trust provides you with all the technology that you need, your mobile phone and the laptop, your online training your supervisions, it's all there for you. And, and little extra things that you can do as well. So why should you apply today? Well, in my view, working in a healthcare role can be really challenging, but hugely rewarding. And often great things require lots of hard work to make them great. And the career in healthcare is no different. Many of our staff talk about the satisfaction that they get from working as part of a team. And it's absolutely true that we have an amazing array of teams across our services. For me, our roles are not just about caring, 
They're about making a positive difference and enabling people to live their best lives. And that's what motivates me. Maybe that's what motivates you too. So thank you for joining us. We hope that you found this session useful. Um, we really, really welcome your applications. So please um, you know, get involved and have a look. And also we really look forward to hopefully um, seeing some of you working within the Trust very soon. Thank you. OK, just before we move on, um, if you had a bit of a glitch there, maybe halfway through, um, it may have been my internet connection. So what we'll do when we send out um, the invite to apply, we'll also send you the link to the video. OK, so we'll just move on now. OK, so we'll move on to next steps and can I introduce Bav? Thanks, Paige. Um, so hello, my name's Bav and I work in recruitment. I hope that that video has given you a good overview and insight of our trust and what it's like to work for us. So after this session, all attendees will receive an email from myself. Um, that will be with a link for the vacancy. Um, you will then need to click onto the link to apply for the healthcare support worker role. Um, so now I'm just going to explain a little bit about our recruitment process just from the start to finish, just so you can see what might follow. So our recruitment starts with advertising, trying to find the right person with the correct skill set for the criteria of the vacancy. Um, so once the vacancy is advertised and you have applied, um, there's nothing that you need to do at this stage. Um, so your application will then be sent to the recruiting manager, um, which will be sent to shortlisting and then to interview. Um, so key points on what to expect during this stage. Um, so you'll receive an email confirmation that we have received your application. And then if you are selected for interview, um, you'll be asked to book in for your time slot online. Um, so at the moment, our interviews are being held virtually. So a link will be sent to yourself and the panel members, um, and then you'll just need to join that interview at your time slot. So once you're successful at interview, you'll then move to the offer stage, which is where you'll be completing your pre-employment checks. So our uh, pre-employment checks consist of ID and right to work check, um, a DBS check, professional registration if required, completion of mandatory e-learning, which is supported by our training team also, um, occupational health clearance, and then also references covering, covering the last three year period. So um, once all the checks are complete and you are done with that um, you will then receive an unconditional offer letter to agree a start date once that start date is confirmed recruitment will then start to draft up your contract of employment and get you booked on to our trust induction um, so here is our agenda for change pay scale based on bands two to three um, this is dependent on um, your nhs history and experience so now I will hand over to our Head of Resourcing, Marianne Summerfield. Thank you. Thank you, Bab, and good morning, everyone. I'd like, uh, I'd like to introduce you to our friendly recruitment team, headed by Matt Hudson, who looks after onboarding and time and attendance. Supported by Bab, who we've just met on the call, Thane, Georgia, Helen, Anita, and Leila direct contact details for the recruitment team will be shown shortly after this presentation. So finally, for anyone who may be looking for full flexibility, why not consider joining our temporary staffing team, often referred to as the bank office within NHS organisations. Black Country Healthcare are looking for registered mental health nurses and healthcare support workers to join our dynamic temporary staffing bank. You'd be working across a range of our wards and departments, covering various sites across the Midlands. You can expect to be helped by our clinical services and promote positive patient experience. Many of our substantive, uh, substantive staff join our bank to earn extra money and gain further experience. So if you'd like to join our bank, what can you expect? Flexible hours to suit your own needs, excellent rates of pay, nights and weekend work, online self-booking system, which is quick and easy, the very important weekly pay, 
support and training from our highly qualified nursing team and a temporary staffing office that's open seven days a week to support you. You'll have access to over 12,000 shifts every month. So do you think a role with Black Country Healthcare Bank is for you? If so, we look forward to receiving your application and the details are shown on the screen. bchft.bankhelpdesk at nhs.net. And as I said, they're open seven days a week on 0121-612-8040. Opportunities with our partner organisations are also available through the temporary staffing office. So I'll now hand you over to Paige, who will confirm further contact details and take you straight through to questions and answers. Thank you. Okay, so um, we'll move on to the Q&A. So from what Becky said, there's been some building up, but if there's anything that um, you don't have answered today and it's on your mind, just feel free to email Bav and her email address is there. Um, but I think from for now, we'll just move on to questions, if that's OK, Becky. Hi, everybody. Yes, I've been keeping an eye on the chat as it's been happening and we've been trying to answer uh, questions as they've come up. So thank you ever so much for putting those in the chat box. It's really great to feel your enthusiasm and your energy. Um, I've made a note of some of the common questions that we get in there. So I think um, number one question seems to be how do we apply? Um, so I understand we're going to be contacting everyone who's participated through this event and we're going to be sending out a link which will link you to our live vacancies that are currently open for healthcare support worker roles. Also, as we've already said, it's, it's always worth keeping an eye on NHS jobs because what you'll find is that any ongoing vacancies will be advertised through that particular website. So please make sure it's one of your favourites and that you're regularly checking in with that. But we will send you the link for the here and now vacancies. One of the things that I'm hearing is a lot of people are asking about where and um, I did a really bad job of telling you where our actual hospitals are based. And um, so just uh, to, to recap on that. So in Dudley, we've got a hospital called Bushy Fields Hospital, um, which is uh, near to the Russell's Hall estate. In Warsaw, we've got two hospitals. So we've got one at Block Switch called Block Switch Hospital and one at Dorothy Patterson, which is near to the Warsaw Town Centre. So really good sort of connections from a transportation perspective. In Sandwell, we've got three hospital sites. So we've got one at Heath Lane, one at Hallam Street and one at Edward Street. So those are all um, localities that are within that West Bromwich area. And again, are fairly close by to all those um, public transport connections. And then in Wolverhampton, we've got a hospital called Penn, which is on the Penn Road um, as you travel in towards the, the city centre. So hopefully that clarifies where we are from a hospital's perspective. But obviously we do have healthcare support worker vacancies across um, quite a range of our community based teams as well. Some of the other questions that I've seen are in relation to working hours and flexibility. And just to say that um, within our inpatient areas, we do provide 24 hour, seven day a week care. So we do work with a range of different shift patterns, which means that there is uh, a tremendous amount of flexibility there for people who want to work specific days, um, you know, weekends, evenings, all of those sorts of shift patterns are there. But also just to say that we do have a flexible working policy, which is uh, universally applied. So it's inclusive of everyone and it's a, a policy that enables anyone to um, put forward any particular requirements or recommendations about the hours that they need. So really what I wanted to say to you is that if you've got particular needs, please don't let that be a barrier to applying for a role and that we have um, a wide range of roles. So I'm sure that we would find ways of accommodating um, the hours that you're able to offer. Another uh, area of questioning is around experience. So um, for us, it's just really exciting to be talking to people who have got that real passion and drive to want to come and work within our kind of area and to work for the NHS. And for us, um, as I think Ashley spoke about, um, finding people who share our values is probably one of our most important areas of criteria. 
So whilst it's great if you have had previous experience, and again, that might be formal experience through paid work that you've done, but also it might be through work that you've done as a volunteer or even caring roles that you've had within your own family. It's really great that you've got that experience and we're really pleased to hear from you. But actually, if you sat there thinking, do you know what? Um, I can't think that I've really had any previous experience, but I am really excited and really interested in this as a role, then please do apply. Um, you know, we are keen to attract uh, new people into, into our services and we, we really welcome your applications. Um, one quite important question, which I'm going to ask my colleagues to help out with, is that people who've joined this event anonymously and um, potentially may not have shared their email address. Um, just wanting to clarify whether we have got an absolute record of, of email addresses for absolutely everybody. So I'm not sure whether either Charlotte or um, Paige or even possibly um, Bav might be able to help with that one. Um, I'll, I'll come in, it's Paige. Um, as far as I was aware, in order to get the link for this webinar, you had to register with an email address. So unless um, you've got the link from another source, um, you will get the email with the um, application, that kind of thing. If you think you didn't come in via that route, if you just email Bav and obviously you can see her email on the screen, she can send you that link. Um, but as I say, my understanding is that everyone should have come via that, that way and we've got a log of your email. Don't know if anybody needs to add anything to that. That's brilliant. Thank you, Paige. And um, I guess the, the recommendation would be yeah, just make a note of Bab's email address just in case, just in case, you know, you want to reach out to us. Um, other things that I'm seeing popping up in the chat box are around um, people who've got a range of various um, educational qualifications. And I'm seeing information there about all sorts of things, which is, is brilliant that people are pursuing um, those courses. And um, so, yes, uh, you know, it's great to hear from you as well. If you're already a student and you're already studying, we'd really love to hear from you. If you're someone who has um, previously worked as a registered nurse, again, um, please get in touch with us. And what I would say is perhaps give uh, an email to Bav just outlining what your individual circumstances are, because we do have a range of different routes, um, either whether that's return to nursing um, courses or whether it's that you've qualified within another country and we, you want some support to help look at how you transfer that registration to the NMC, then please do get in touch with us, outline your individual circumstances and one of the team will get back to you. We've got questions about um, whether you would be allocated to a specific hospital. So, uh, so yes, so our aim would be if you're applying for a permanent post, we would want to allocate you to a particular team. And so we would be working with you, looking at where we've got vacancies, but also looking at what your own individual circumstances are so that hopefully we can find a match that works for us and works for you also. If it is that you're thinking about joining our bank, so that's the temporary staffing um, part of our service, then um, those shifts get allocated on a shift by shift basis. So you'll hear about the shift, when it is, where it's happening. So then you'll have the choice to be able to opt to either opt in and to take that shift or not. Just checking through to see if there's any more recent questions that have come. We've had um, quite a number of people mentioning the fact that they're also interested in administrative roles. Um, so what I would say to you is, um, number one, have a look at NHS jobs. Um, any of the jobs that we are advertising will be on there. But also please uh, contact us and respond to the, to not necessarily apply, but respond to the email that we send you just to let us know that you've got an interest in a particular type of role. So that again, we can either signpost you to where those roles are or perhaps keep hold of your details if you're happy for us to do that so that we can let you know as and when those roles do come up. 
Also, I think it's probably worth mentioning that our temporary staffing um, team and our, our bank um, also does um, hold um, people on there that have got administrative skills because, again, it's a really valuable um, asset to have and, you know, uh, very much valued and important part of the team. So we do have bank shifts for admin staff as well. Are you allowed to apply for more than one vacancy? You can apply for as many vacancies as you want to, so yes. And what you'll find is that once you have registered an application on NHS jobs, it's quite a helpful system in that um, if you would want to apply for another job, it will hold your information. So it means that you're not starting from scratch. So it's quite a useful um, system to work with when you're applying. I'm just scrolling down to see if I can see if there are any more questions there that require answering. OK, we've seen a couple of questions about the care certificate. So um, I think Laura outlined that the care certificate is transferable. So if you've already done the care certificate in a different organisation and then you come to join us, then that will transfer with you. So you won't need to repeat it. But what we will want to do is to make sure that you get a really thorough and comprehensive induction when you start with us. Um, because I think starting any new job can be quite daunting, can't it? So we will make sure that that induction takes place over the first few weeks of being with us. We've got questions about uh, being related perhaps to people that already work within our service. So just to say that shouldn't be a barrier to you applying for a job. But what we would ask for you to do is just to make make it known to us. So um, on the application form, uh, if you could just make a note on there just to let us know um, that you you have relatives that work already work within the trust just from an openness and transparency perspective so that we can support in, in looking at how the best and most professional way of managing that. OK, there's a question about immediate starts. Um, so uh, once we go through that um, recruitment process, that starting date would be something that would be negotiated at that point. Once we've gone through the, the actual recruitment process and done the um, pre-employment checks and check references and DBS checks and occupational health screening. And once we've got all of that clarity, we would then negotiate with you a start date. Um, so and I guess that would be dependent very much on what your individual circumstances are. If you are able to start immediately, that would be fabulous. But if not, obviously, we would need you to honour your um, any notice that you need to give to any existing employers. Has anybody spotted any questions that I haven't answered or that we haven't answered? Just seen a few come in now, actually, Becky. Um, so someone's come in here and said, do you have to do manual handling or manual handling training for the role? So yes, uh, moving and handling training is an absolute uh, requirement for all staff that work within the organisation. Uh, but the type of training or the level of training will vary dependent on the role that you have. So for uh, a lot of our staff that that training is, is done via e-learning. For anyone that is involved with working directly with patients where there is a potential of needing to, to move and handle patients, then that training would be done face to face. And so, yes. Thank you. Another one that's just come in now. Um, someone's asked, can university studies be taken into account with these roles as they are currently a full time student studying from home? Yes, so uh, so yes, we've got quite a number of 
staff who are studying as well as working. A number of people choose to, to work with us through the bank because I think that gives them maximum flexibility. So it means that um, at times on their programme, their, their educational programme, perhaps where it's a little bit more intense or they've got more exams taking place, for example, they perhaps uh, do perhaps less hours at that time, but then at times where they've got um, leave from that programme, then that's where they perhaps do more hours with us. So yes, um, there's there's flexibility there to be able to do that and, and doing that via the bank is probably the best route. Perfect. Another one that's just come in, which you might have already previously answered, but just in case I think a few more people are asking something similar around this. Can a person apply without previous experience or would you need experience, for example, in a hospital or a care home? Yes, so for us, um, one of the most important things that we're looking for is people that share our values. Um, and I think that experience is absolutely really, really useful to have. Um, but what I would say is that experience comes in many forms. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have had a job doing exactly this in another place. Some people have had lots of um, useful, valuable experience, either as a volunteer or through care that they've provided to family members. So all that's really very valuable and useful. But actually, if you sat there thinking, do you know what? I haven't had any previous experience that really uh, sort of is, is similar to this. Um, that is not a barrier either uh, because we really want to bring in new people into the NHS, people that have got the right kind of attitude uh, that demonstrate the right sort of values and behaviours that we share and people that we can nurture and train and, and work with. Um, so yes, uh, please don't let that be a barrier. Please just apply. Thank you. Um, someone says, will you get an email if you've got an interview or is it a phone call? How, how do you get notified if you're successful for an interview? So our system is very much normally around emails and um, depending on how, how um, the vacancy is set up, sometimes we will offer people the option of selecting an interview slot. So Again, we aim to be as flexible as we can be through um, our recruitment process as well, but it is likely to be via email. So it will be an online application and that will then um, trigger a chain of communication via emails. Um, someone has asked, if you join as bank staff, how does training work if you have no past experience? So for our bank staff, as well as our staff that are working on a permanent basis, um, we have a very similar kind of an induction program and we still expect our bank staff to complete mandatory training. Um, so we would need to work with you to make sure that we can build that into your induction and to make sure that we're able to, to create that avail availability of training for you. Lots of our mandatory training is done via online, so that means that it, it is flexible and it can be done at, you know, at, at whatever time suits you. But then there are other aspects of training that do need to be done face to face. And um, so again, we would um, kind of work with you on and create a plan that works for you once we get your application through. Thank you. Uh, someone's come through and said, do you have any tips for standing out during the recruitment process? Wow. <laughs> That's, I mean, I'm going to let everybody else chip in as well, but my, my main advice would be be yourself, you know, be yourself, uh, bring your true self to the interview. And I would say, yes, um, you know, bring, bring that passion, let that shine through the interview. Yes, tell us about any sort of particular skills and experience that you've had, but I think <coughs> excuse me, we're really interested in understanding why it is you're interested in this role as much as, um, you know, the experience that you've had. So, yeah, just be yourself. <laughs> any other advice from any other colleagues online? <coughs> I'd just like to say, Becky, that enthusiasm to work with us and within mental health services at interview is always really helpful and that's the type of person we're looking for and I'm sure that you'd be able to come across in that manner too. Thanks Marianne.
Okay, I've just seen another um, message there saying I didn't get how to apply. So just to recap, uh, we will be contacting people um, after the event has finished. We'll be sending you a link which will take you to details of vacancies and also uh, information about how to apply. If you're worried about that in any way, shape or form, then please do make a note of Bab's um, email address, which is currently on the screen. So it's bhavika, B-H-A-V-I-K-A dot mission, M-I-S-S-I-O-N at N-H-S dot net. So that if you don't receive that link for any reason, or you, know, you, you want to reach out and get in touch with us, then please do contact Bav. Another question has come through, actually a few people have asked about this. Do you need to have GCSEs to apply for the vacancy or specifically GCSEs in English and maths? So there is no um, essential requirement to have GCSEs um, in order to apply for this role. I think that we are looking for a range of, you know, a range of potential really. And I think some of those qualities as a, as, a, as a person and the ability to build relationships is probably really quite fundamental. What I would say, however, though, is that if uh, you're interested in uh, undertaking GCSEs and particularly if you're interested in doing some further work in, in English and maths, perhaps it's something that you never did when you were at school, then we do have opportunities and pathways to support you with that. Because what we often find is that if people are interested in moving forward and progressing to do um, further training whilst they're with us, so for example, um, some of the um, apprenticeship opportunities or perhaps even stepping into um, other roles, then often um, English and maths GCSE are required. So we would support you in, in, in getting, getting ahead with that. So just to say, we just had a lovely uh, message from somebody saying, this is brilliant, looking forward to taking the next steps and applying very soon. And thank you for all the information provided. And um, so just thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's great to have your interest and we're really, really thrilled to have so many people interested in our organisation. It truly is a, a great place to work. Um, there's quite a lot of people who've worked here for some time and you know are able to really testify that that this genuinely is a good place to be so please do um, have a look at what's sent through give it some serious thought remember that throughout all of this that there is maximum flexibility there so um, you know whatever your individual circumstances and needs are please do get in touch and please do apply so we look forward to hearing from you Page. I'm not sure if there is anything else that we need to cover off before we finish. Um, no, I don't think so. I think it was just to highlight some of the social media channels and get following if you can. Um, and again, just to reiterate, thank you for all your time and good luck with your application. And I think I think we're done. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending today.